And we're back. It's been a little while since our last job, but we've got Ivan 2104 back in the shop. And Sean's got some work to do. Yeah, we do. We have to rebuild the steering box in it, and then we're also going to install a reinforced bearing idler assembly for the steering as well. So we'll take you through that, show you all the steps and the parts we're going to use. And like always, we're going to improve the car. First step when doing a steering box repair on one of these cars is you have to isolate the steering wheel. Now you can either use your seatbelt and wrap it around, rope, a club, anything really. Here at the shop I actually have a steering wheel holder from our alignment machine so we will use that. Once we have that locked we have to go down in underneath to this junction and there's a bolt on the back side that we have to remove. Once we loosen that off we'll hit some penetrating fluid. Then everything else is done from underneath the hood or under the car. So let's have a little bit of honesty. In that last scene, you seen this piece fly right off, no problem with the puller. But Sean, was that the case? Not even a little bit. So what you didn't see is me heating it up with the tor propane torch first, trying to put enough heat in to expand it to get it to come off. Because we were actually flexing the puller apart. But that didn't work. We had to use the big torch and get the whole thing red hot and so hot that the sector shaft turned blue. And that's really not a good thing for a cast piece or any real steering component. So technically this should all be being replaced with new stuff, but considering all the new parts are over across the water in the big land, that can't be the case for tonight. So we're gonna rebuild it still, put it together, and probably order a new steering box later. So the moral of the story is, things don't always go according to plan and sometimes you're just better off to buy a whole new piece. But we'll move forward with the rebuild. We have our steering box here on the bench and a quick rundown of how they work and what's wrong with it. So here's the shaft that hooks to the steering wheel, it comes down inside and there's a worm screw, just a spiral cog in here. Then you have this shaft that comes up through and it has a set of teeth on it right here. And when you turn this, it turns the set of teeth side to side and that moves the wheels. It mounts a boat like that in the car. This one, the problem with it is it has a lot of up and down play, which you can kind of see and here. And also it was leaking at the seal, draining all the fluid out of the bottom, which is not really a big deal because it is just gear oil. And if it was only head up and down play, you could actually adjust the play through here and take up your travel and it'd be fine. That there just pulls a little cog up, locks it in. 
but because it was also leaking, we have to redo it. Here's the top cap of the steering box and a very key important piece of it. Inside here, there's a slot that this piece slides into just like that and that holds and sets the height and the depth of this here as it rides on the gears. And this is how you adjust your box to take that free play out that I was talking about. So they just kind of thread in, they have a little lock knight on top, very very key important piece, sometimes you will find them broken. Here is the shaft. We are going to have a bit of a oil mess in a moment. There's the roller. Sometimes they are worn, so be careful of that. Sometimes they are pitted. And once we get this further apart, I will show you what this rides on. Here's your top cap. It this is what sets the preload. There's a series of shims here. This one currently has three. Well, the one's still stuck. You use a different number of shims depending on which box it is, manufacturing tolerances and variances. But this goes down and clamps on the top and actually wedges the two bearings together so you don't have no end play in this particular piece. Here we have the bearing race which is not in too bad a shape. Like I said, this one just had some end play this way. We're only rebuilding it because it also had a seal leaking. The bearings on this are probably fine, but while we're in there, we replace them anyways. Here is the main piece of it when I was talking about the cogged worm screw. It goes in and sits just like this. And when you turn it, that goes like that, and it'll turn this side to side throughout its travel and the piece that went in the top for adjusting actually just changes how and where this sits and rides in this piece. If you have it too high up, you'll have a bunch of play. If you have it too far down, you can actually over tighten it and it'll cause the steering box to feel very, very stiff and give very poor feel and the car will not return to center. If you've ever over tightened them to that point, you pretty much ruin the box. You go and you buy a new one because you can take it back apart, but it'll never be the same again. You'll stress the aluminum too much. We are going to now punch the race out of the bottom piece. It's the only real pressed in part of this whole unit. Just take a little chisel like this, put it on the back side, give it a few taps each side. You are dealing with aluminum, so you want to be careful and don't move it too far because you can stretch the aluminum until it does that. This box is nearly disassembled as far as we can go with one more exception. It's gonna be hard to see, but rag for a moment. Inside of here is a set of bushings. If your steering box down here, if this shaft has any side to side play, there's no bearings here, it's only a bushing because it turns only, you know, 45 degrees side to side when you turn this thing four, degree, four turns. So they're not a high traffic unit, they only have a bushing. But if there's any side to side play, that bushing is wore out. You can buy the bushings, but they are hard to change, very hard to change nicely without special tools. At that point, I would just buy a new box. It's not worth your time. Now we throw everything in the parts washer, clean it up and get ready to replace pieces and paint it and put it back together.
is available from Pavo at a lot of power. And what it consists of is two bearings, a set of races, a top cap gasket, and then a steering shaft uh, seal and a sector shaft seal. That's all you need to rebuild the steering box in one of these cars. We are now ready to begin installation. On this seal, I'm going to put that in the bottom first. Pack the backside full of grease. And the only reason you do it on the backside is there's a steel spring in there that keeps tension on the shaft, as it were. But you fill that full of grease, so when you hammer it in, that spring does not fall out of there. But if you don't grease them, half time the input and the shock will knock that out, and then you have to take it back apart, and a lot of times it ruins the seal. Just a neat little trick so you never have to fight with them. Getting these started are tricky. Now look at those flushes I can get it with the seal installer. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit too big, so I have to use an improvised socket as an installer. And I might actually do it this way, so I can kind of get an even hit on it. There we are. That's installed all the way down in. Next step is to install the race for the bearing. Now it's easy to accidentally put this in backwards like this, which would be very bad because once you get it in, there's almost no surface to hit against to get it back out. You've essentially ruined the steering box. So make sure you always have the race part where the bearing rides facing up. And these are not the funnest part to put in either. You turn it over and look and you'll see when it is in the whole way, it'll be bottomed out. There we are. You can see it's in seated all across the bottom the whole way. Once we have that installed, we can install this seal. And again, I pack the backside full of grease just to prevent any issues. And that's about all that one gets is it just sits down flush. We take our bearing race and we don't really need to pack it with grease or anything because it is going to get filled full of oil. So we put the tapered side down in so it sits in the, in the race just like so. Now we move this over to the vise. Pull that down in. Take our next race. That'll go the other way with the taper facing up. Then we take the big race, and that'll go in this side. Make sure the vise is good and snug. With the bearings and race seated, you'll see that it does protrude a little bit, which is no big worry, because that's what them shims I mentioned earlier are for. They just go on the top, and they space that top cap. Now to stop these from leaking, what you can use is something called anaerobic gasket maker and anaerobic literally means in the lack of oxygen so unlike silicone that in the presence of oxygen dries this stuff when you put it in between metal when there's no oxygen then it hardens and seats in the oxygen in oxygen it stays malleable so we can put it in between it's the same stuff they actually use for sealing up transmissions especially in Fords just a little bit around just a skim doesn't need much. The nice thing with this stuff is if you get it in where you shouldn't, it doesn't harden. It ain't like silicone, it does not plug anything up. So it can be in bearings or that and it'll just get washed away. No big deal. If you don't use something like this, you stand the risk of having it leak on you, which is no fun a little fiddly to get all the holes lined up in all the shims but not the end of the world now, I'm sure there's a torque spec for it I don't really use one I just use the old-fashioned German one guten tight
Here I am greasing up the shaft only because there's bushing. I, I know. There's bushing. <laughs> There's bushings down in there that we don't really want to put this thing down and dry. The gear oil will eventually get to it, but not really quick enough. A little bit of grease, a little bit of lube never really hurt anything. Giggling like school children, I said shaft, I'm greasing it. That just goes down in like so. And you can see how when you turn it, it makes this move back and forth. It's a very simple system. That's all there is to it. Now I'm about to do the most finicky part of this job is aligning that back up with the slot in there. Easiest way is to shove this up, get her down so that it all goes together. It's a very snug fit. You get her like that, drop her down in. Then we will get the bolt started and as you see it does sit off set of it that's that part i was talking about where you can adjust this so being held up off right now is no big deal for now i will leave take this nut off and there's an adjuster star washer here that actually lines up with this groove to lock this so it can't turn so we'll remove that and then we turn it counterclockwise and it'll pull this cap down on and then if you turn further, it'll actually pick the shaft up off of the worm drive and or you turn it the other way and it'll shove it down on. That's how you'd set your preload. So for now, we'll just suck it up a bunch so that I can tighten this all down with no worries. Now, the next part a lot of people will argue about and sometimes the manual is a little bit open for interpretation. The way the mechanic that trained me had taught me was when adjusting a steering box, you take them down till they're snug, like just so they touch and they get tight, so they get resistance. Then you back them off half to three quarters of a turn. It's a bit subjective, it varies among manufacturers, but this is a good rule of thumb that'll work with nearly any box. So we were sitting there, we'll back it off one half, and I, this is gonna sound really bad, I like a tight box better than a loose box, at least when we're dealing with a steering box. So I'll go half a turn instead of a three quarter turn. If you go three quarter turn, you'll have a little more play, but it'll be a little more pleasant. I'd rather be a little more firm. You put the lock washer on, and then the nut down on we'll get that snug then you have to make sure you hold the, the center part with your screwdriver and then turn your lock nut with nothing else on it and then you check and see how much movement you have before the shaft starts turning we don't have much just a little bit and if you find that you've adjusted up and it's still a little bit of slop give it a little more turn down in, you know, go eighth of a turn at a time until you get it so you have a little bit of play, but not too much. It is really quite subjective. Yeah, that's perfect. What I have in my hand here is copper anti-seize. We are going to put it all around the splines, specifically so I next time do not have to heat the holy hell out of the arm to get it off. This will stop rust from building up in between and seizing it on, hence anti-seize. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to cover all the splines. The arm will shove it down in the rest of the way. Don't put any on the threads, you want that to be nice and tight. Next step is to install the Pitman arm. It does have a little spline keyway in it. And over here on the back side, there's one set of splines that doesn't have a groove cut through it. And them two line up, there's only the one spot it can go. We put that down on, we take the lock nut, or lock washer, sorry, and the lock nut. We put her down on, and then we run it tight, nearly to that German torque spec again, and then a little more. 
That's about tight enough. Now we just gotta fill it full of oil and put her back in the car. Final step of steering box assembly is to fill it. I am not promoting Royal Purple, it just happens to be what I have on the shelf in a synthetic gear oil. It takes 0.215 liters according to Baxter's Neva site. I don't know why specifically 0.215, why 0.22 don't work, but this is exactly 0.215, give or take a little bit. By that we mean really have no idea how much is in this. And for people who don't know about Royal Purple, it actually is purple. Once you have it full, you just gotta clean up your mess, install your fill plug, and you're ready to install in the car. While we're in there doing the steering box, we're also gonna replace the idler arm. The one in the car is not worn, but this is an upgraded one that has steel bearings inside instead of hard rubber bushings that wear out. I much prefer this style, and I find they give a better steering feel. So while I have all the linkages out, it's the best time to put this in. Just undo two bolts, pull the old one out, bolt her back in place, hook everything back up. Simple. going to install the box and it's a relatively straightforward process you gotta bring it up angle it in get it lined up with the little hole in the firewall it's kind of not real nice and easy but it's nice and easy once you get it in it kind of falls right in place and when putting the bolts in you have to be careful and make sure you put the bolts from the inside out not this way the head of the bolts are actually the limiters for your travel. And if you put them the other way, you'll have a bunch of threaded rods stick out and you'll only get about half of your travel in your steering box. have to hook up our steering linkage pieces then put our clutch sleeve back in place once that's in we can move top side and hook up the steering wheel the last step in this process is to hook the shaft back up onto the spline piece and it's a rather coarse spline so put it on so when your wheels are straight your steering wheel is as close to straight as possible it'll either be way off or pretty close put it at the pretty close mark because either coarse enough that there's no other real adjustment the rest has to be done through an alignment. So you just get it set up so it kind of starts to connect. Take a hammer and gently tap it down on until you can get a bolt in it. Once you get it that far that you can get a bolt in it, then you're good to go. And then you're all done. So that concludes another episode where we fix something on Ivan 2104 and hopefully taught you something along the way. Sean, good job. Absolutely. There was a bit of fighting with it. Um, some unexpected hardcore fighting with it. Yeah, it was it was tricky in some spots, but definitely doable. Uh, recommend buying another steering box if you have that availability. Yeah, um, went back when I rebuilt the steering box in my lot of Neva. Not a problem, went off without a hitch. Everything just popped apart nice and easy. This one, despite being only 37,000 kilometers instead of 300,000 kilometers, was a a lot harder, surprisingly, just from being seized together. Yeah, and nothing, nothing came apart quite as we had hoped, quite as we expected, but that's the nature of things sometimes. Yep. So, stay tuned for our next videos. We'll have one down the pipe before you know it. Thanks for watching. Later.